that and listen, girl. I want to know everything now. And if I lose money on these pilgrims because of Kali, I'll take it out of both your hides. All right. Take a few others with you. You know what to do. I know how hard it's been on you people these last few days. But we can't let Mrs. Grant know that. We don't want to show her we're beggars. She'd take the gold right out of your teeth. That is, if you had any. <laughs> well, I'm still against it. Everything you have told us has just been hearsay, Mr. Hale. Well, I have great respect for the wagon masters who gave me that information, Mr. Maitland. Perhaps. But it has been my experience not to let my decisions be influenced by others. Perhaps those other wagon masters had trouble with Mrs. Grant because she saw through their trickery, and it angered her. We cannot afford to let... Someone from taking advantage of you is hardly trickery, sir. As a very successful merchant, I'm sure you're aware of that. Dealing in merchandise is quite different, Mr. Hale. California's a long way from Grant's well. Money's not only necessary to get there, but an absolute necessity after you arrive. Maybe Mr. Hale's got it figured right, John. I don't see any harm. Because it could turn Mrs. Grant against us. And if that happens, she would refuse to sell us any water. There is a time to be humble and a time to speak truth. Humility and truth beget mercy. And fear begets destruction, Mr. Maitland. I assure you, Mrs. Grant will sell us a water. But how much we have to pay for it will depend on how badly she thinks we need it. Well, my son Gerald and me will try to do like you say, Mr. Hale. All right, I'd appreciate it if you pass the word. We'll go on for a couple of hours more and camp for the night. Get us a good night's sleep and we'll be bright and chipper in the morning. Right in. Mr. Maitland. As soon as we take on water, I'd like your permission to send Bill Hawks back to North Bluff for your daughter, Sally. I forbid it, Mr. Hale. A few minutes ago, you spoke about mercy. Don't you believe in it? For those who deserve it, sir. My daughter went into North Bluff against my orders. When I ordered her to return, she refused. She made her choice. Choice? A 17-year-old girl is capable of changing her mind every minute. You didn't wait that long to give her a chance. Mr. Hale, your being wagon master does not give you the privilege of interfering in my private affairs. Does Mrs. Maitland feel the same way about it? I make the decisions for my family, not Mrs. Maitland. Good day, sir. Never mind, Bill. Gerald, please, I'm begging you to do this for me. I... I wish you wouldn't, Mrs. Maitland. It's not that I don't feel sorry for you. You're her mother, and that's different. But I can't feel no sympathy for Sally. Please, Gerald, all I want you to do is give her the money so she can come and join us in California. Then she should have stayed with the train instead of sneaking off to North Bluff. I thought you'd be over the hurt by now. Feeling like you did about Sally, I thought you'd be the last to think bad of her. She didn't think of my feelings, ma'am. Nor mine. I'm cursed with a Jezebel for a daughter and a thief for a wife. I've got a right to help her, John. Not with my money. She's our daughter. No. And the next time you do anything like this, you can join her in North Bluff. Now go into the wagon. You did right in refusing her, my boy. Ever since Eve, women have used charm and gentility to deceive men. Hema, get that mule going before I lay this whip to you. Come on. and they'll loosen their purse strings quick enough. No sign of color yet? Men, good for nothing. The whole blasted lot of you.
looks like we were expected. Sweet cold water from Grant's well. Fill your cup. Kind of like tempting a hungry dog with a bone in it, Mr. Chris. All right, folks, let's get back to the wagon. It's water. Sweet cold water from Grant's well. Fill your cup. Sweet water. Get a cup. Now, wait a minute. Mrs. Grant is not without mercy, sir. Before this trip's over, he and me is going to... We'll do well with this bunch. Now, listen, wait a minute, wait a minute, folks. Now, we're near dried up, Mr. Hale. We've done everything you said, but that's water. And we're asking you to step aside. I'm asking you to consider why that barrel of water was put here, when we're less than an hour away from the whole well. To a thirsty man, an hour can be a lifetime, Mr. Hale. Mr. Maitland, that barrel of water would only be a mouthful for everybody. And a mouthful of water to a thirsty man is like pouring kerosene on a flame. Bill, Charlie, put that barrel on the wagon. We'll take it back to Mrs. Grant. This is not your decision to make. I'm the wagon master here, Maitland. Should be plain to all of you why that water was put here. Don't let it weaken you. All right, let's move out. <laughs> into my folly, said the spider. <laughs> Chris Hale, wagon master. Maybe it's Grant. Nice to have so much company. Running low on water? Well, my scout left word that it was a little dry the next few miles. No use cutting it too close. Why, it's dry as a bone for the next hundred miles. Oh? Well, then maybe we'll need a few more barrels than I thought. Best to be safe. I have all you need. Well, you can put a few of your wagons in the compound. Thank you. All right, Charlie, take them ahead. Yes, sir, Mr. Chris. Yes, sir. Got it. By the way, I wanted to thank you for leaving that barrel on the trail. My pleasure. We had no need for it, but rather than let the heat turn crackish, I brought it back. Oh. Your wishes is our salvation, madam. Now, why do you suppose you said that? Well, let me know how a few barrels you need. Mrs. Grant may not dress for the parlor, but you can't deny he's friendly. Deny it. I expected it. I expect your friendly remark is going to cost us a tidy sum. You're a fool, Mr. Maitland. What? How dare you? I shall report this to your company, sir. I shall report it personally, if we make it. Where's Chris, Charlie? Right there. What is it, Bill? Looks like words weren't enough. Yeah, Mrs. 
Grant didn't need that to know our situation. Everybody told us how hard she is. They forgot to mention she's smart, too. Get away from Wells. No water now. We are not here to be ordered around. Water and day. Now, Adelaide. I want you people to get away from this well. I don't want you to take any of that water until I settle the price we have to pay. Well, maybe we all better go back to our wagons and wait there. Come on, Patty. Let's make a stand against them, Chris. Wouldn't be practical, Bill. First place, the law would be dead against it. And they've got help. Look behind you. This is not going to be as quick as I thought. Plenty quick. Water much slow. No, that hail's no fool. We've still got them under control. They're not ready to give up the family jewels yet. Oh, if I only knew exactly how far this drought has spread. Must be plenty far. That's why Collie not back. Look at him. Scared to death. But still so full of respectability, they make me sick. Get over to Hale's wagon. He's got a barrel of water that belongs to me. What's she waiting for, I'd like to know. Her tongues are hanging out now, ain't they? They're not hanging out far enough, Charlie. You know, there's one good thing that's come out of all of this. Good. You can't make any more of your bad coffee. What's the matter with you? This ain't no joking matter, you know. Well, I'm not joking, Charles. Uh-oh. We take barrel belong, Miss M. Grant, now. Oh, well, I've decided to keep it. Tell Mrs. Grant I'll pay. Miss M. Grant say take barrel now. Easy, Bill. All right, Charlie, show him the barrel. Yes, sir. Getting kind of hard to hold back, Chris. One wrong move now could hurt a lot of people. Charlie! Yes, sir? Hi, gentlemen. Mr. Hale, we feel sure you'll agree that an offer of $2 a barrel for water is a fair price. I feel sure Mrs. Grant won't accept it. It's our best offer. I told you, John. What do you think, Mr. Hale? Five dollars a barrel? That seems fair. That's better. That's robbery. Exactly, Mr. Maitland. But that's what appeals to Mrs. Grant. Well, I won't pay it. Why are you complaining? It's easier for you than most of us. Five dollars, Mr. Hale. We'll try. Huh. That's very touching. And if I could remember how to cry, I would, Mr. Hale. It wasn't meant to bring tears, Mrs. Grant, just consideration. They have much money. And it's a long way to California. But my oasis is their salvation. One of them said that. And now I'm expected to fill their barrels and wave them on their push wet. We expect to pay for it. All we ask is a fair exchange. That's all anybody asks for. But you don't always get it. I never got it. I ask, I even beg. I got nothing. But now I'm an oasis and a salvation. And that comes a lot higher than a stinking five dollars a barrel, Mr. Hale. But twenty-five dollars a barrel? Mr. Hale, that'll take all the money Frank and me's got. That well, don't give Gerald and me much to get started on in California. Can't you talk to her again, Mr. Hale? Make her see we can't afford it. We haven't done anything to her. Why does she want to hurt us so? Well, Mrs. Grant seems to take pleasure in hurting Mrs. Maitland. What if we refuse her price? She's merciless. She'd force us to leave. I don't think you're in a position to answer that, Mr. Maitland. Now, there's one opportunity open to us. What is it? Now, don't raise your hopes until you've heard all of it. Let's dry for the next hundred miles. That's two weeks traveling. And until I hear from Duke Shannon, I don't know whether this drought has spread clear from there into Fuller's Junction or not. And that's the next water stop. But if we should fill just half our barrel and ration very tightly, 
That means no water for Cookie. Most of the water will have to go to the horses. Without them, we'll all perish. And it means we'll all have to get along on one cup a day. Now, if you're willing to do that, we could make it to Fuller's Junction. Well, it seems to me we should wait until you hear from Mr. Shannon. I've considered that, but that may be three or four days, and I doubt if Mrs. Grant will allow us the sanctuary of her well that long. You're telling us to leave here and risk being stranded in some forsaken hole out in... I'm not telling you to do anything, Mr. Maitland. It's up to all of you to decide for yourselves. I don't see that we have any other choice. Well, I have another choice. I can afford to pay her price, and I intend to fill all of my barrels. That's your privilege. But in the event we need it, we'll use your extra water for the whole train. You can't do that. You wouldn't dare. There are no special people on this train, Mr. Maitland, when it comes to a question of survival. We're with you, Mr. Hale. That's right. Line the wagons up at the tank. Make sure nobody fills more than half their barrels, and no less. Yes, sir. Leaving here with empty barrels is the wrong thing to do, Mr. Hale. There's more than an even chance that it's dry beyond Fuller's Junction. Well, that's a chance we prefer to take, Mr. Grant. If you guess wrong, you'll end up buzzards, bait. At least those buzzards wait until you're dead to pick your feet. All set, Mr. Chris. All right, move it out then, Charlie. Yes, sir. Bring yours up, Morgan. Get it. All right, Morgan. Papers, mister. We're honest people, Mrs. Grant. Sure you are, Sonny. All right, get your water, Gerald. The money, Mr. Honest. How about a cup of coffee, Mr. Chris? You better have some. It's going to be a few days before I have any of this, and I don't want you to forget how good it tastes. Huh. No, thanks, Charlie. I'll take it, Charlie. No, you won't. Not till you apologize for saying my coffee's bad. All right, I'm sorry. Hear that, Mr. Chris? It's about time, too. Yes, sir. -y. Charlie, I've always been sorry that your coffee's so bad. Hmm. Might be Duke. I believe it is. I can feel it in my bones. Yes, sir. What do you suppose that means? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> Why can't people be like you? You don't care what I was, what I am. <laughs> Who is it? Charlie, Mr. Grant. Come in. I ought to shoot you where you stand. Uh, but Kelly got good word. You're lucky you got back before that train moved out. Where you been? Kelly go very far. Fuller Junction. No water. No water to Pine Flats. Pine Flats. Are you absolutely sure? Kelly very sure. Please, Mr. Kelly, ready to die from no water. Go ahead. <laughs> Pine Flats. I think that'll jar Mr. Hale a bit. Who, Mr. Hale? Very good customer. Go get the others. No, no, uh, never mind. Get some rest. Tomorrow morning will do. Huh? Mm -hmm. Well, looks like we can get some sleep after all. Yes, sir. But I don't know how she can, Mr. Chris. I sure don't. You can learn to live with anything if you want to, Charlie. Well, good night. Good night. Her light just went out, Pa. Now, listen, son. 
You better do like Mr. Hale said. But there's no need. Gerald, maybe your father's right. After all, Mr. Hale does think we'll be able to find some water at Fuller Junction. And if he's wrong, we'll be trapped in the middle of the desert to die. Well, I've got no mind to die yet. I tried to persuade him to buy more water. Buy? That woman's got all the money from us she's gonna get. We got no more to give. She's a mean woman, boy, and no fool. You get caught and there's no telling what she and those redskins will do. I won't try and grab her till everybody's had time to go to sleep, Pa. And once I make her hostage, we'll have plenty of water. And those redskins can't do nothing. At least you must be very careful, my boy. I told him not to do it. Come on. Drag him out here on the porch. Gerald, stay where you are. What's the boy done? He didn't mean you any harm, I swear it. There you are, Mr. Hale. He comes after me with a knife, but he didn't mean me no harm. How could he? He's honest and decent, isn't he? It was his duty. No, no, it was his right, Mr. Hale, to kill at least one Mavis Grant during his lifetime. Helps clean up the world. He only wanted you to give us more water. That's the truth. What do you intend to do? What would you do, Mr. Hale? What you say is true. I'd turn him over to the proper authorities for punishment. That's exactly what I intend to do, Mr. Hale. And proper or otherwise, I'm the authority around here. And the punishment is 20 lashes. Time to the post. No, please. That's the last warning you're going to get, I promise you. You're not the law unto yourself. Hold your tongue, Mr. Hale. You're the most vicious woman I've ever seen. There's not a shred of love or compassion in you. You're so full of hate, it'll destroy you. Destroy me? No, Mr. Hale. I can't be destroyed. You have to have a weakness of heart to be destroyed, and mine was ripped out of me years ago by people just like all of you. Decent, respectable people. One mistake, Mr. Hale, just one mistake a long time ago, and you've kicked me ever since. You drove me till I was nothing. Two years ago, I headed west with a man who was as much nothing as I was, and that wasn't even the bottom. Three cases of rot gut whiskey or me had to be thrown off the wagon to lighten it. And it was me old man Grant found crawling on the desert with the snakes in the ass. Old man Grant married me only because I was lower than he was. There was no love, no compassion, no pride, just hate. That's what the miserable lot of you have poured into me and that's what you're gonna get back. If anyone moves, shoot.
How's young Morgan? Oh, I think he'll be all right. We'll put his wagon last and keep an eye on him. Mr. Hale? Come to wish us luck, Mrs. Grant? Now, you're being unjust, Mr. Hale. This is a new day, and like the sun, we should start it bright. Yes, I wish you luck. Thank you. And you're going to need lots of it if you hope to make that 200 miles to Pine Flats with your water supply. There is no water at Fuller's Junction, Mr. Hale. I have scouts, too. After all, these bits of information are important in my business. Well, good luck again. There ain't no truth in what she says, is there, Mr. Chris? Better not bet on that, Charlie. Tell the people I want to talk to them. You think they caused trouble, Mrs. Grant? Oh, they'd like to, but Hale knows better. She's lying. She just wants to get back at us for Gerald. Now, just take it easy, Mr. Morgan. I'll kill her before I'll give in to her again. Morgan! You'll be cut down in seconds, and so will a lot of other people. I don't care. I'll kill her. Now, come on. Now, there's a loyal and loving father, if there is such a thing. Hmm. You should have let him kill her. When I hear talk like that, it makes me wonder if Mrs. Grant wasn't talking truth last night. There is no truth in that woman, Mr. Hale, and you know it. I don't know it. You, you don't believe her about the water, Mr. Hale. I can't risk not believing her, Mr. Folsom. Then why didn't she tell us about Pine Flats yesterday? I don't think she knew yesterday. Bill and Charlie and I saw that Indian come in last night. Well, he could have brought word that there is water at Fuller's Junction. That devil wouldn't tell us that, Mr. Hale. No, she wouldn't. But if she hadn't known yesterday that there wasn't any water at Fuller's Junction, it would have been better business for her to tell us then, before we took on only two weeks' water supply. She's found her right place in this filthy hole. Let's quit! that now, Duke. Let's get him inside. Here you go, Duke. Just a little at a time, Duke. That's got to be their scout. You weren't lying about it being dry all the way to Pine Flats. No water, Miss Grant. I sure. It's dry out there, Chris. Not enough water between here and Pine Flats to, to drown an ant. All right, boys, put him in the wagon. Come on, Duke. don't seem to understand, Mrs. Grant. Forty dollars a barrel, Mr. Hale. Take it or leave it. These people just don't have the money. Well, they've got other things. Silverware, linen, family heirloom. Every solid citizen has that. Yes. Yes, they have those things. You'd rather have that than money, wouldn't you? Things that mean home, roots, family. Things that you can't have. I didn't know you were such a fool, Mr. Hale. You're the fool, Mrs. Grant, if you think that by depriving them of their cherished possessions, you'll make them less than nothing, too. Shut up and get out of here. Get out there and tell them the price is $40 a barrel and I'm not running a hotel. You've got five minutes to make up your minds or you'll be run off. I want you all out of here. I hate the sight of you. Hate or envy. Get out! Chris? What's happened, Bill? Sally Malin's been brought back to North Bluff. She promised me $20, mister. It wasn't fun like I thought, Father. Sally's been here for the sun, Mr. Chris. We ran out of water two days ago. Get some water, Charlie. Yes, sir. I'm not a child, Father. I'm sorry. She promised me $20. 
I'm 17, Father. You've got to let me say what I think once in a while. That's not wrong. Oh, I know. Where's Maitland? Daddy! Daddy! Daddy, stay where you are. John, please. Let me go to it. Don't home. you go near that girl, do you? She's not there. Hold her here. Daddy! <laughs> I'm sorry, Father. I didn't mean to hurt you. I am no longer your father. Show your mercy, man. She's asking forgiveness. Forgiveness? She defied me. She left the sanctity of my roof. She spent days in a dirty border town like a fallen woman. She brought dishonor to my name. Oh, no, I, I didn't. I didn't. Can't you see she's telling the truth? I see nothing I will forgive. <laughs> I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Stay away from her, Mr. Hale. <laughs> Yeah, I moved an inch since she took Sally inside. She won't come out, she won't let anybody go in. Can't figure it out, Chris. Well, maybe Mrs. Grant can't figure it out either, Bill. I'm afraid she's got more time to think about it than we have. Everybody's in their wagon, Mr. Chris. Willett wanted to come with us. Why, any trouble? Oh, Mrs. Maitland, she's sure that Sally will be the first one they heard if anything happens to Mrs. Grant. It's a blasted shame you can't trade the father for the girl. Amen to that, too. I'll see that you get your money, Mr. Willett. You've earned it. After the way he, he treated her, why, I'm sorry I did. Chris, do you think you ought to? I don't want to start a fight, Bill. I want to prevent one. You know what you're doing, don't you? I hope so, Charlie. go back to wagon. You tell Mrs. Grant I have something to say to her. Miss M. Grant not listen, she say. Or maybe she listened to you. You tell her either she sells us water by sunup, or we'll take it. You not take water. You tell her we'll fight for it. We have to. So far, so good. Well, why shouldn't it be? Mr. Chris knows what he's doing, you know. Say you go in. So you'll fight, will you, Mr. Hale? That wasn't my intention, Mrs. Grant. I thought that news might get me in to talk to you. What makes you think you know people so well, Mr. Hale? I don't know people at all. I wish I did. Well, you're in. What do you want? I'll pay your price. But I'll ask you to accept a note, which I'll request my company to pay as soon as possible. Will that satisfy you? No. Only one thing will satisfy me. Get your wagons and that bunch of spiders off my land. You can have all the water you want at sunup. Free. Yes, you heard me right. It'll be worth it to me to get rid of you. Where's Sally? Asleep. Will she be ready to leave in the morning? No, Mr. Hale. Sally stays with me. I'll treat her like my own daughter. Is that what she wants? What she wants? What she wants, not one of you would give her. You wanted water, you've got it. Sally's not your concern anymore. Why do you want to make her your concern, Mrs. Grant? Because she's a cast-off, and I'm a cast-off. Sally's not going to be like me. I didn't know about the world, and it beat me to a pulp. She's not going to be like that. I'll teach her about the world, and the people in it, and how to beat them to a pulp. 
You're a self-pitying coward, Mrs. Grant. Perhaps you were wronged once. Everybody's wronged one time or another in their lives. But most of us take it, straighten our backbones and go on. The other few whine, run away, and blame the rest of the world for their own lack of courage. That's what you did. You can't teach Sally about the world and people. You've been hiding from it. All you can do is make her just like you. Good night, Miss Grant. <laughs>